The next interview is with Mebby Banizak and Ken Purdy. Hello again, my name is Gene Horton and I'm in the Bayport Blue Point Library and today is May 20th, 2013 and we have two native Bayporters with us today. Our first guest is Mebby Banisak and she was went to school from lived in Bayport for all her life. And we have Ken Purdy, who likewise, is, he and his family, they lived in Bayport all their life. And today we're just going to talk to both of them informally and find out more about what they know about Bayport or what they remember about Bayport years ago. So maybe I'll, I'll ask Mebby first to introduce herself, giving your, giving your name and your address and uh, talking about your family in Bayport years ago. Well, my name is Mebby Banizak. I've lived here. It'll be 83 years next month. And uh, oh. my father was a builder, and he built the first house that uh, he built on North Charlotte Avenue. I came right from the hospital when I was born to that new house. <laughs> Isn't and he that built amazing? 12 more after that <clears throat> on Gillette Avenue. Wow, on Gillette Avenue. And those houses are still standing today, I presume. When he built the house, yes. it didn't fall down. It didn't fall down on a hurricane, <laughs> that's for sure. No. Not even the hurricane in 1938. And Ken, what about you? When did you, your family come to Bayport? I'm not sure, but I arrived. In 1930, 30. Uh, born at Southside Hospital in Bayshore. And your family was already living in Bayport? Oh, yeah. Two, yeah. Ge two generations. Two generations. Before that. Wow. And those houses are still standing where your family lived? Yes. It is. You should have plaques on those houses. <laughs> <laughs> they don't build them like they <clears throat> used to. <laughs> no. Yeah, they sure don't. Today, I think houses are stapled together <laughs> or something. I don't know what, but know. they're not built to last like the older ones are. Right. And what about schooling? You went to Bayport, yes. Abby, right? Yes. They didn't have a <clears throat> kindergarten at the time, but the first grade. Oh. And uh, the whole school was just the original part of the high school now. That's where the cupola is on that part. I, yeah. <clears throat> right? And that housed everybody then from first grade up to 12th grade. Right. Well, there was only 39 people in my graduation class. Yeah, that was small. In well, 1948. 1948 you right. graduated. Wow, right after World War II. Do you stay in touch with those people? Oh, yes. You do? Uh, as a matter of fact, we're having our 65th class reunion oh. the same day as the alumni luncheon. Oh, that's wonderful. We have an alumni luncheon once a year, and, uh, and we're going to celebrate our reunion at that time also. And Ken, what class did you graduate with high school? Well, I went to kindergarten mm -hmm. in Sayville since Sayville. there wasn't any in Bayport. Oh. And uh, I, I didn't graduate from Bayport. Oh. My last two years of high school, my parents thought I should Go, go away. Oh, you went away to high school. So I Good went feel. to Salisbury School in oh. Salisbury, Connecticut for oh. two years and graduated <clears> from <throat> there. Well, oh, that's school. wonderful. Now, is that school still there, Salisbury School? Oh, it's got grown tremendously. It's grown. Mm, they wow. keep asking me to come back, showing me pictures. Like sure. This. And that was a boarding school, I presume. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's very it's interesting. small. Small. At that time. Yeah, now I it's... I think in the old school, we <clears> only <throat> had a, yeah. a little over 100. Now, maybe do you remember any of your teachers in Bayport? Oh, yes. We had uh, Mrs. Potter. She oh, was yeah. the English teacher and oh. the social studies teacher. She lived on uh, Fairview Avenue or well, Kensington. Kensington Avenue, I think. Kensington. Her husband, John Potter, worked for the plumber. Oh. Right at the end of Bayport Avenue, there was a plumber... And we had Mrs. Ports. We had Mrs. Ormsby. She was a math teacher. We had Coach Vignato, the coach. Um, he was there for years. Mrs. Stahl. B. Uh, Stahl, her name was. Who else, Ken? I don't know. Many years ago, when I was in first grade, it was I, Miss Terry. Uh, Miss, I remember Mrs. Crampton. She oh, yeah, was, Mrs. Crampton in third grade. She was very nice. Yes. She, 
She gave me a red pencil when I got everything right on the test. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? She used to make us do <clears throat> an exercise every morning. She would open the windows, and we all had to face the windows, and she would make us do the exercise. Yeah, for sure. And then air. she used to play the piano, mm-hmm. and she had the piano catty corner in this classroom, and we were allowed to bring a turtle in but we had to clean up after the turtle. (laughs) (laughs) And she gave us a piece of paper about this thing. Oh, my word. (laughs) But she was a nice lady. I remember Helen Wigger, too. Oh, yeah, Miss Wigger. The seventh grade teacher. Right. And what did she teach, all subjects? Yeah. I guess so. She stayed in one class. Because I taught seventh and eighth grade for many years, but I only taught history. And now it's all departmentalized. But I guess in the old days... That yeah. one teacher taught everything. Yes. yes, until you got in high school. Mm-hmm. That's when and you... then it changed. Yes. What about Mrs. Ports? Yeah, Mrs. Ports taught English. She was the one that lived on um, Lakeland Avenue, and she invited oh. us, a few of us, over to decorate her tree at Christmas time. Oh. And then we had hot chocolate. Ooh, at Mrs. Ports house? Yeah. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I didn't get invited. I, I guess you didn't get invited. invited. <laughs> or, or else my memory is. <laughs> Maybe it was only the girls. I think it was just <clears> the girls. Probably just the girls it was went about over. four of us, I think. Yeah. Were either of you in sports? Did you play sports at high school? I was a cheerleader school? for a while. A cheerleader? Oh, I remember. You were a very good cheerleader. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> and I went out for soccer, and then when we had our physicals, my doctor said, you can't play because your heart is going too fast. Oh. So I didn't go, go out oh, for any too bad. At least your heart was going. That's important. But then when I went away, the doctor examined me, and he didn't say anything. And I played, I played football, basketball, baseball, oh. through <laughs> everything. And I don't know, but they didn't say anything. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I was glad I was able to. Yeah. And do you remember downtown Bayport, as I always called it, downtown? I don't know if new people even know about that. Oh, we know. We used know to hang about out downtown. There for the mail. We didn't yeah. have mail delivery. In where was years. the post office when you were young? Right where that beauty parlor is, right? I think that's where it was. Yeah. But we beauty had Miss Stahl's candy store there. Oh. And she had one great big case of all penny candies. Don't you remember that, Ken? I don't remember. I guess I didn't get any. And she would have these little bags, and as soon as you walked over to that counter, she would take a bag, and we'd point to ones we had. Maybe we only had five cents, and she'd put them in the bag. A penny each. Yeah, a penny each. I remember Shans mostly. Oh, yeah, Shans. Because I really liked Shans. So did I. It was a wonderful store. And I missed it when they went. Did you know Arthur? Our, oh, our yes. Arthur Shand, yes. Oh, he was always so friendly. <clears throat> Very friendly. He was a gentleman. Yeah. I remember one day I went shopping in there, and I forgot my wallet. And he, he wouldn't care. They said, don't pay next time. Well, they'd never do that at King Cullen. <laughs> and they used to deliver, too. They would deliver. Groceries. Yep. Yeah. And he walked. He brought your package out to the car. He yes. didn't want you to carry <clears> it. <throat> it was too heavy. Oh. He walked you out to your car. He was a wonderful man. My mother just called on the phone and yep. and uh, then they delivered. Isn't that amazing? And and the personnel <clears throat> they had were always so nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one old lady worked there. I can't remember her name, but Pearl. I forget now. Yeah, I forget name. too. But she worked there, <clears throat> and Mrs. Shan <clears throat> was the bookkeeper for a long yes. time. Yes, yeah, she was yes. bookkeeper. But she she lived right across the street. I think. Right where that liquor store was, across the street. The only one I knew that lived in that house across the street was Urban. Do you remember Urban? Oh, I remember the Urban. And they lived across the street there. Yes. And today it's uh, that pastry store, you know, Miss... What's it's her name? Pastry there, right? store they know? Yeah, it's near in the Urban house. It's now a pastry store, I believe. Well, there's a grocery... Gluten-free... Grocers. Because the Grosses lived across the street from Shan's, too. Remember? Was like Grosses. When uh, Irma lived across the street? Yeah, that was Irma Riley's. They had the fire. Maiden name. The firehouse <clears> was there, <throat> too. <clears throat> Do you remember the big tower 
on, oh, on yes. the uh, firehouse. Yes. That Big was tower. right next to Shands. Right next to, just west of Shands. And mm. then we had the Manhattan House. The Manhattan oh, yeah. House. I never went in there, but I heard about it, yes. Well, that was quite a that place. That was quite a place. <laughs> yeah, the Manhattan House. I don't know where the There were two was. families that ran that at one time. One was um, Joan oh. Sicola. Remember Joan no. Sicola? And um, Bobby Vanskirt. I think they were cousins mm. and their family. Ran the Manhattan House for a while. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. I remember uh, Ike Homan. He w he lived alone in an oh. old house further west of the of the fire. Oh, the Homan House. Oh, was that, that it? Was that Holman? the old Homan House? Because that place didn't look too good toward the end. You, well, Ike was his name. Yeah, I think that's where he lived. Oh, I remember. And what did he do in Bayport, Ike Holman? I don't know. I just switched here, here in Blue Point, we have a Holman Avenue. I was wondering whether it was the same family. I don't know. I don't know either. It might be because they had. They used to name uh, streets. streets, like the Gillette. Sure, Gillette. Gillette's lived there. Sure. And uh, there was a Miss Gillette that wrote about yeah. the history of Bayport. And yeah. I had a copy of it, and I can't find it. I yeah. looked and looked all day. I looked at I know it. the one you mean. I, I can't remember her first, first name. Was it Eva? It could have been Eva. I think it might have been Eva, but I'm not but sure. she wrote a whole history of Bayport. Where did she live? Do you remember? I think she lived on a... Was that that little house on the bend there? I think... The White House on I the north side? I think she lived on the corner there, Gillette oh, Avenue yeah, or on Middle Road or someplace okay. in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, right around there. Yeah. And then there was a Gillette mm -hmm. house sort of up on the hill. Yes, on Middle Road. Yeah. That's like the first house going into Bayport from yes. Blue Point, the Gillette house. Yeah. yeah, do you know anything about that house, Ken? Just so it was just a Gillette. always there when I was right yeah. there. Well, we used to, um, we didn't have bus service, of course, and we used to walk, walk. to get the mail because <clears throat> we didn't have mail delivery no, either. No. And remember, we used to walk down to the post office and wait for the 4 o'clock mail? Wow. And we used to hang out there in front of the post office and wait. Stanley Arankowitz and my sister and... Marie Otto, and I thought you did, too. And, and where was the post office then? Right where the uh, beauty salon is. Right is that Spotlight? Was yeah. It was Spotlight is. But yeah. now Spotlight's gone, too, I think. Oh, well, Isn't it was it? right next to the deli, mm -hmm. to the east of the oh, deli. Oh, right east right of the deli. Right in there someplace. Wow. It was a... I, I see the deli is for rent. Yeah, the yeah. deli is for rent now. Oh. I saw that. It, it doesn't seem to last. No, you know what's tough reason. there, Ken, is parking. Parking okay. hurts. If you can't yeah. park, people don't That's shop. Right. That's They'd right. have to park in the town In that little lot. town parking lot. But people today are so lazy, they don't want to walk from there to the deli. No. There is. It's, it's very hard there. It's very hard. And, and, you know, years ago, we had nothing up north on Montauk Highway. Nothing. Now we have everything up there. <clears throat> I know. We have King Collins. Yes. We have the drugstore. We have the uh, CVS. Um, yeah. 7-Eleven. We have everything up there now. And what was in Country Junk years ago? You know that store? It was a barber shop. In yeah. There. It was a barber shop. Jack, Jack <clears throat> Iverson was the barber, oh, and I okay. used to go to him. And he had a trimmer also. Oh. And they called him Shaky Jake. Shaky Jake. Yeah. I hope he was careful with the razor. Well, I, uh. I, I never got cut. <clears throat> <laughs> but he, he was nice. And his wife, uh, I forget what, where she worked, oh. something like like uh, like a parole officer or something. Oh. But but she was very, yeah, very nice yeah. person. And do you remember the Bayport house? Do you remember Gene Ammon? Yep. I don't know if that name rings a bell, but he yeah. was there for many years. I remember. I, <clears throat> I didn't go there. But yeah, the Bayport. He was a man and his sister. They were a brother that and sister. That was Hans and Katie. Oh, I that's think right, yeah. that was yeah. brother and sister. That's right. But Jean Ammon was married. I can't remember her name, but and they ran it for like twenty years or something. Yeah. I don't know how long. And and John Hodge used to carve uh, ducks, birds, and make pictures with carved ducks. And they yeah. had all of that in that. I think restaurant. they had hundreds of them. Yeah. And they're all gone today. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, I remember the ducks. Yeah. yeah. Do, do yes. you remember John Hodge? That name. Oh, yes. 
because he was a famous... Wasn't he a policeman? And uh, yeah, he was a crossing guard, crossing guard, actually, at the school. Yeah. So you do remember John Hodge. But oh. also, we had um, we didn't have mail delivery, and <clears> uh, <throat> Mr. Michow used to have a bicycle with oh. a big basket on the front, and he used to go to the post office, pick up the big bags of mail, oh. go to Bayport Avenue. There was a pole there with an arm that stuck out, and yeah. he'd hang the bag there. And the train would come by, and the man on the train would reach out, grab that bag, and throw the mail for Bayport on the ground. Mr. Meechow would put it in his basket and come <laughs> to the village. Wow. See, in those days, the mail was delivered by the railroad. Yeah. They didn't have, oh. rail, they didn't have postal trucks. Right. On, yeah. on the big roads. And rain or shine, Mr. <clears throat> Meechow was on his bicycle. Yeah. You wow. remember that, Ken? I don't. Wow. Yeah. And then you knew Stanley Arankowitz, of course, right? He was Who? in our class. Stan- Stanley Arankowitz. Oh, yeah. He, he yeah, was Stanley. in your class. Oh, yeah. he was. I wish he were here to talk. Oh, he yeah. would know so oh, much. He, yeah. <clears throat> he would know a lot. He was really a nice guy. He was a nice guy. He was really yeah. a nice guy. He was a good friend of mine. I, I was a good friend of his for over 60 years. and yeah. uh, He had quite a farm there. Well, you know, a greenhouse yeah. complex. Uh, five acres. Five yeah. acres. And I always admire that chimney with the O. There's a big O never, on that chimney, Orenkowitz. And Stanley could tell a joke. <clears throat> yep. And <laughs> you, you had to laugh. It, with the way he told a joke, it was so funny. You had to laugh, and then he yeah. would giggle at the end. Yeah. He was so pleased with Stanley. himself. Stanley. And he was oh, postmaster for many years. Yes. I don't even know how many. Yeah, good one. We went to lunch <clears throat> one day, and he came. Two days later, he was found. He died. In his yard. Isn't that oh, awful? Stanley. Stanley. <clears throat> he had a heart attack, didn't he? Yeah. I don't know what... I, I don't know what's the cause of death, but... But they uh, were looking for <clears> him <throat> because <throat> he was going out, he was invited out to dinner at his friend's house, and he didn't show up. So the man went over there to look for him. He looked all over. His truck was there. He looked all over. Uh, Couldn't find him, walked around in the back, and there he was. Uh, it was so sad. But everybody loves Stanley. Yeah. Yes. I used to call him the mayor of Bayport. <laughs> he was a knight, and he always had something good to say. He was a really nice yeah. guy. Yeah. He was very active in Bayport heritage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was active in everything. Yes. <clears throat> if somebody needed something from the store or yeah. anything, and Stanley and I used to uh, go to visit a few of the people that we knew from school that were in nursing homes, and we would go to visit. I would <clears throat> drive, and... Um, because he had Parkinson's, and I would drive, and he always would come out to the car with a little bag, and he'd have a couple of apples and bananas and cookies <laughs> to bring. He was so thoughtful. That was very nice. He was a sweet <clears throat> guy. He Do you remember great. any other colorful people like that in Bayport? Well, remember D- John, yeah. and he used to have <clears throat> the horse and buggy, and he would go he would pick up hay and stuff, I guess, and, uh-huh. and he would be riding with the horse and buggy past the school. <laughs> and I remember one time, I was in the fifth grade, and I was sitting by the window, and you always faced the uh, south. Uh, the The window had to be on your left shoulder. Oh, okay. For the light. So <clears> I was busy <throat> looking out the window to see. It was springtime, and it was oh. so beautiful. And he was going by in his hawk and horse and buggy, oh. and I was looking and looking. Oh. And Mrs. Stahl came. She must have called my name or something, and I didn't hear it. She smacked me on the Ooh. with a ruler. With a ruler. <laughs> you weren't paying. You were daydreaming. I know. <clears throat> and it was on account of John. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. Well, what we used to do was walk down the village after to get the mail. You don't remember going down there? We used to go mm. through the woods and come out by Shands. See, they didn't, when they started home delivery, that's when houses got a number. Yeah. But before home delivery, you didn't need a house number. No. Nope. You know, you you just lived on yeah. Gillette Avenue or yeah. something. Yeah. No house numbers. Mm. That was different. Yeah. But in those days, the one of the focal points of the whole community was the post office because everybody went there. Yeah. And they knew 
what time? Like 4 o'clock, the mail <clears> came <throat> in. So <clears throat> we'd get out of school at quarter to 4. We'd walk down there yeah. and wait for them to sort the mail. And then we'd take the mail and go home. Take it home. First, we'd go and drop <clears throat> Mariano off, and then we'd drop Stanley off, and then we'd go home. Did Stanley always live at that house? That was yeah. his family home, yeah. Your house has an interesting history, doesn't it, Ken? Your family estate down there? Wasn't it in one of those books, Bayport books? Well, well, my grandfather, my grandfather, used to live in the city, oh, okay. in Manhattan, and uh, they used to summer out here because the, of the polio epidemics. Mm. People used to come out to escape them. Right. And th they came in the summer. Right. So. Uh, Oh. They came out for a couple of years. <clears throat> that they they had a, had a hotel in the city, the Langen. The Langen. And uh, that's burned down since. Oh. But uh, well, he had been, he 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 had a number of houses built. He bought a farm. No, first they, first, first they lived on Middle Road. Oh. They had a big house on Middle Road, and then my grandfather loved duck hunting and fishing in the bay. Mm -hmm. So that's why they came out here. And then uh, one day they brought up his ne nephew because he didn't get along with his parents. And he, so he was very fond of this nephew. And they were out duck shooting one day. And the nephew got sh shot accidentally in the knee. And then the fellow who shot him fainted. So they tried to get him back, but he'd lost too much blood, so he died. And then my, my grandmother said, I, I never want to live in this house again. Ooh. That was the Middle Road house? Yes. Yeah. So uh, mm. actually somewhere along the line, they sold it to Mr. Kohler, who oh. cut it in half. And it's in two houses on Connecticut Road now. Oh, so they moved it off Middle Road. Yeah. Oh, my. But the, and they moved over <clears> to <throat> Snedeker in one of the houses that he had built and was renting. And then uh, somebody wanted to buy that, so then they moved to a different house he had built. Wow. And that's still there. I think in the old days they moved houses more than they do today. Yes, you'd see them today going. Today they smaller. knocked them down. And a lot of them were small. Smaller, now the of houses course. Are much larger too. They're much larger. Yeah. I think that was the same on McConnell Avenue. There's a house on McConnell that was moved in two parts, and that's where McInerney's lived. Do you remember McInerney? Oh, yes. I think that was part of a house. Judge McInerney. And then another part is further up the street. Yeah, Judge McInerney. Yes. Yeah. The two, that was a split two house. Large houses. Yeah, two large houses are up on McConnell today. I guess they, they, there wasn't so much mm -hmm. traffic I, I guess when you're so. moving your house. And there probably weren't the same number of electric wires. No. Because now that's a big problem if you're moving a, a building. The wires are in the way. They, they still, mm -hmm. several years ago, I don't know how many, but they did bring a house over from Blue Point and down oh. next to our house, they did. down Purdy Lane. Now, Purdy Lane would be named after your family. Yes. And do you know who it was named for, your grandfather? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. Didn't you, did your grandfather die before your grandmother? Oh, yes, and for, did she, long before. And she lived with you, your grandmother? Well, or we lived with her, whatever. It was her house but she lived, yeah. But, uh, yeah, her husband... Uh, I, I never met him because he died at 63. Oh, yeah. But he was very, very <clears throat> nice, apparently. Yeah. And uh, it was said that no, no person ever came to his door and asked for something that, and went away with nothing. So my grandmother lived to be uh, 87 or 88. Wow. And he died at 63, so wow. she was a widow for, well, for a long time. Long time. <clears throat> Who lives in the Purdy home now? Is it Dr. Campbell? Is that the house? Mm -hmm. well, that's the and that would be on South Snedeker, is that right? South or? Snedeker. Yeah, South and Snedeker. And he has five boys. <clears throat> he does. Wow. He and Rebecca. 
They're very nice. So that's one of those split houses. That was originally one house, and then it was divided. I don't think or, so. No, it wasn't okay. No, actually, it was my grandfather's, mm -hmm. oh. and when my father got married, he added on. Oh, he added on to the so house. So my parents <laughs> lived in the uh -uh. same house oh. with them. Oh, that's nice. Interesting. Yeah, it's so. very interesting. Do you remember the railroad station at all? Does that ring oh, a bell yeah. with you? or We used to roller skate did you, all around the railroad station. It was all cement. Isn't that and nice? we used to go there and roller skate all around. When it was there was no agent in there or anything, no. it was, you know. I then, remember the that the railroad station, but I don't remember. I didn't mm -hmm. roller skate there. <laughs> roller skating. <laughs> I know it had a cement floor. It was whole, all around. It was all cement. And then it was all covered. Around. There was a big canopy over it. I don't remember that. Yeah, a long canopy. But I used to commute to the city, oh. and there was never an eight. I can't remember an agent being there. No. And uh, then all of a sudden, they they didn't stop there anymore. No. They don't you, stop at Blue Point either. No. You'd think as the towns grew larger, yeah. they would need more, more, or, or at least the same ones. Even for um, parking. I mean, Sable parking lot is tremendous. If they picked up people in Blue Point and Bayport, that would eliminate that, too. That makes too much sense. The railroad doesn't do that. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I rode that railroad. Do you remember the steam engines? They used to have big steam engines out here. Oh, yes, oh, I remember. Yeah. 1949, 1950. You were a commuter. Yeah. You don't remember how much you paid for a ticket, do you? I think it was like thirteen dollars a month. Thirteen a month. Like that. Now it's about three hundred and fifty a month. Ooh. And it really? was uh, five cents for the uh, subway. Five cents. Now it's two and a quarter, I think. Oh God. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I'm not I have doing been that on anymore. A train and so <clears> on. <throat> and the other interest, I have railroad schedules that go back to the twenties. Trains today from Patchogue or Sable make about the same time going into Penn Station, as they did 50 or 60 years ago. The speed of the trains hasn't really picked up that much, but the equipment is nice today. Well... Double-decker, or, you know, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice, nice looking. It goes by. I, yeah. I haven't been on the train in... Well, I went to the city a couple of times, Yeah. but that was a long time ago. Now you have to get the train out of Sable. Ronkonkoma. Or Ronkonkoma or Patchogue. And that right. parking lot... Parking lot in Ronkonkoma... They have room over there for 6,000 cars, and there's not enough room. No. Wow. This, this uh, house that I was talking yeah. about, we were talking about moving houses, and mm -hmm. this was uh, several year, years ago. But they, uh, I forget where it came from, Blue Point or, or Bellport. They floated it down on a barge to the end of Snedeker, and then... Brought it up, probably the Davis Brothers, I don't know. Yeah. They did all the moving. They brought it up to Purdy Avenue and down there and then put it in a, in a plot. That's amazing. Yeah. It was probably easier to move it by barge rather than by road. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, oh. another thing, during World War II, I was a Girl Scout and... Um, my friends were, and we used to go to the firehouse upstairs and roll bandages for the uh, troops. And uh, we'd go up there every Wednesday, and they would give you a mat, and it showed you put the um, uh, material on the mat, and then they had it marked so you knew how to fold them, so they would all come out in squares perfect. And... Um, we used to do that every Wednesday, and uh, then uh, with the Girl Scouts, we used to make scarves for the service people, and that was all. And I was, I think, <clears throat> I was fourteen years old when we used to do that. And uh, then they would send them overseas. And then uh, there was a big farm where the apartments are in Blue Point and Bayport. Okay. Mike's farm, and uh, he rented out a big portion to Rennie Chevalley, who owned the greenhouses. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> he uh, grew carrots for the troops. Wow. And uh, a few of us, we were only kids, I think we were 13 years old, 
and we worked pulling weeds out of those carrots. I never saw such big carrots in my life when they really? when they harvested them, and uh, they sent them overseas. We got thirty cents an hour wow. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, nobody wants to do that work. No, no. <laughs> well, we were happy to have the money. <clears throat> that was during World War II. Yeah. Didn't we used to have a butcher shop in Bayport, too, next yeah, to Shands? Yeah. And also, I remember, because my father was friendly with him, uh, Mr. Manta, who had the uh, Plymouth dealership. On the corner where the sign makers are now. Right. That was a showroom for his Plymouth cars. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. And we'd go down there often because they were friends. Mantha's Garage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But everybody what used to go down there. That was like a meeting place, wasn't it? Oh, was it? Oh, I don't know. People, because they all yeah. liked him and they all go down there and yeah. sit and talk to him. <laughs> I don't know how many bought cars, but. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then they had a. One in Patchogue, I don't, I don't know, late, maybe later, and his son, Bob Mantha, ran, ran that one. When, uh, when the one was in Bayport, Bob was working for the, I don't remember, like a parole officer or oh. something like that. I remember Bob. You know, there was mm -hmm. so many people in Bayport at the time. We knew everybody, right? We knew almost everybody in Bayport, everybody knew everybody, everybody spoke to everybody, everybody was friendly, right? Now, you don't know anybody anymore. Yeah, it's very different. And the it's traffic. Different. Traffic. We, I remember my father used to tow us <clears throat> behind his car when it snowed on our sleds, and we just, I don't know whether we had a rope or... Uh, you belly whopped and hung onto the I, bumper. I, did we? That's what you did. Oh, I don't remember that. But anyhow, we used to tow us all around. But there weren't any cars around, no. so it didn't matter. No. Uh, well, one kid got hurt that way. Did he? Remember? It? No, I don't remember. One of the Dagger Boys? Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Got hurt that way, too. Uh, well, they'd go right through the village with yeah. the cars, you know. And uh, it was pretty dangerous. What about the bay? Were you involved in boating or... Sailboating or anything on the bay? Yeah. My oh, friend and I yeah. used to go down to Nick's. Oh, I remember Nick's, Nick, right? sure. And we used to rent yeah. a, a rowboat for $2. <clears throat> oh. And we used to go out in the bay and try to get the blue claws. Yeah. So, Nick's clam bar up by the bridge? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> remember then, that road that you went down, that shell covered yes, road? Yeah. Yes. Nick. Yes. I don't know his full name, but I just remember Nick. Just Nick. Nick. <laughs> Yeah, we went down in the summer. We were, yes. We spent most nice days on the bay or on the beach. Oh, well, years we'd, ago. We'd, we'd go over the ocean. Years did, you have ago. A, did you have a sailboat? or a? When I was 12 years old, we got a sailboat. A sailboat. And then we raced in uh, wet pants and sailboat. Oh, yeah. That was really fun. Yeah. Years ago, mm. from, bay, from, North, from South Gillette Avenue to Fairview Avenue, Right. Down to the bay. That was a beach down there that we could use. Yes. It wasn't maintained at all, but there was sand there, and there. Um, and we used to walk from my house all the way down there, and we'd get there. We were so happy to be at the beach, and Jimmy Dukas had this old truck. Remember Jimmy Dukas's? He was on <clears throat> South Ocean Avenue in Patchogue next oh. to the Rialto, oh. and he was a Greek man. And he made his own ice cream and candies and stuff. And he had this old rickety truck. And he would come down to the beach. And he, where the dashboard was, he had a little case there. And he had all penny candy in there. Mm -hmm. And then he had ice cream. So we used to go swimming mm -hmm. down there. And he'd come down. We'd get some ice cream. And, and we had to walk all the way home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that whole beach. And now... No wonder you're in such mm -hmm. good shape. <laughs> all that walking. All that walking. So do you remember any other unique things about Bayport, of people that lived in Bayport years ago, or events, holidays, parades? Well, one thing is the proms that oh. they have nowadays are outrageous. We had our gin. 
decorated with crepe paper. It was beautiful. Mm. They spent a couple of days doing it. And we had an old jukebox down there, and that's that was our prom. Wow. And after the prom, we wow. went to Flo's. Wow. We didn't go to a hotel no. and have dinner. <clears throat> and that and we had a wonderful time. But those days are gone forever. Yeah. Oh, you know where Bayport went this year for their prom? The aquarium in Riverhead. And they do it all up there. It's an little indoor thing and tables and music. and In, in the aquarium? Mm-hmm. Yeah, on Main Street in Riverhead. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, it's quite a place. I haven't been there lately. My nephews yeah. go there. I yeah. mean, my grandchildren go there. Yeah, it's not amazing. But the thing is, um, it costs so much money now. Oh. It's and the kids can't drive. No. Most of the kids can't. That's why drive. you see all the limousines going up and down the streets. Yeah. And you know how much that <clears throat> costs too. A lot of money. Uh, it's outrageous. I don't think that's all it's necessary. Different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Different today. Yeah, we appreciated what we had. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't know anything. We had a good time. How big was your graduating class from Bayport High School? I think. 39? About 39 or 40. I don't know, because I didn't Yeah, that's right, you were gone. Graduate. Yeah, about 39, 40 people. Yeah. Wow. But that was that was mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. four mm-hmm. towns, wasn't it? I mean, Bayport mm-hmm. used to have Farmingville, Holtzville. Holbrook. Yeah. And Did they come Hol- in here? Blue Point. Or was that, uh, Blue, Blue Point. Point. I mean, there were four mm-hmm. or five towns. Sure, they make up that class. Yeah, they weren't all Bayport children. Yeah. That's right. I think maybe we had 42 were three in our class, but oh. a couple of them didn't graduate with us. It's a small class. <laughs> Did you know Merle Johnson at all? Do you remember Merle yeah. Johnson? Oh, yeah. He's might be one of the most famous people ever live in Bayport. You uh, know who else used to live and come out for this summer? Don Amici's brother. Oh, really? Oh, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know him. Now, where did he live? He lived... Would um, they rent a place? or? Yeah. He Don lived Amici. on Middle Road... Oh. Uh, east of the village, but I don't oh, know what house it east was. East of the village. But he used to go into Doc Neville's all the time, wow. and he had a voice exactly like Donovan. Really? Um, it was his brother. I forget what his first name is. Wow. Oh, yeah, I remember Doc Neville. He, he that was, was the druggist? Is yes. Is that right? Yes. Oh. And he was alone. I mean, that's a lot of work if you're running a pharmacy yes. by yourself. Yes. Because he had the soda fountain also. Wow. The soda fountain, too. Yeah, he had that. He used to make the best chocolate malted you ever had oh. in your life. See, I don't remember That's that. That's a lot of work. Fifteen cents. <clears throat> Fifteen cents. Yeah, we used to go. My father used to give me 35 cents a day for my lunch in the cafeteria. But my friend Mariano and I <laughs> used to work in the cafeteria making the tuna fish sandwiches yeah. for, during study period. Mm-hmm. And Mrs. Kennelly was in charge and she would just say to put a tablespoonful on the bread and spread it around yeah. so and we got paid a sandwich a tuna fish sandwich for doing that so we made a big sandwich for ourselves a <laughs> double <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Kennelly <throat> caught us doing that so she said, you girls can't make the sandwiches anymore. No more. Got fired. So we used to eat the sandwich um, walking through the woods to Shan's, buy a five-cent devil dog, and then go to Doc's and get a 15-cent chocolate wow. malt. I made money on that. That was good. <laughs> In those mm. days, we were happy with so little. Yeah. It didn't matter, you know. We just. You know. Do you know anything about Bayport Methodist Church? Methodist? The only church in Bayport. Well, you know... Well, when you went there, uh, we, my mother and mm-hmm. father uh, signed us up in that church when we were old enough to go. Yeah. Because uh, for some reason, we didn't register with the Catholic Church, Our Lady of the Snow. My mother and father didn't make their confirmation or one thing, and yeah. so you had to do that first, which they did. But in the meantime, we signed up with the Methodist Church, my yeah. sister and I. And we had a couple of neighbors that belonged to that. And they used to take, my mother and father didn't go to that church, but they used to take us to the um, Christmas party. And Mr. Ted Castle was the minister at the time. 
Did you ever hear of his name? I heard the name, but Mr. I didn't Ted know him. Castle was the <clears> minister. <throat> you remember him? Oh yeah, he used to come to our house. Yeah, and he, they used to give us a little box like um, animal crackers would come in, with hard candy, an apple, and an oh. orange. That's what the, all the kids got for Christmas. Uh, Christmas oh. uh, play or whatever they oh, had there, nice. the service. <clears throat> so <clears throat> Mr. Ted Castle would always say, even after we joined. Yeah. The Catholic Church, uh, Mr. Ted Castle always used to say to my neighbors, bring those children, they're invited too. Good. And so they, they would bring us down there, we got that, the same as the kids that belonged. <laughs> you don't mind me. <clears throat> <laughs> I went to Sunday school there. Oh, you did? And then, uh, yeah. and then to the youth group. Yes. Uh, we had a youth group, about 15 of us, I oh. guess. And we'd go out and do things. Yeah. My sister used to go with Bob Dixon. He was her boyfriend at the time. Pam? That was part Pam? of Pam went with Bob Dixon? Yeah. Oh. That was the school nurse's uh, son. <laughs> He's very nice. And when he came, and then they, he, he went to Florida when he retired. But he came up and visited one time and came down and, and visited Pam. <laughs> Mm. But uh, well, so many of those people are gone now. Yes, you he know. died. Well, you know, <clears throat> one time I was in, I guess it was King Cullen, and this man was seemed to be following me around in the store up and down the aisles, and he had a beard and everything, you know, and he kept like following me and he kept looking at me, and I'm thinking, what's the matter with him? Yeah. You know, I was getting a little nervous. So well, finally, I stopped. And I looked at him, and he said to me, Hello, Meb, how are you? You don't know who I am, do you? Wow. You probably didn't recognize him with the... It was Bob Dixon. Wow. It was Bob Dixon. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, he had this big beard. I think he was living on his boat. Oh, I, I, not, <laughs> I never saw him. But he had this point. big, long beard. So when he said to me, I'm Bob Dixon, I said, gee, I thought you were Santa Claus. <laughs> well, at least he recognized you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't have a beard. That's always pretty good. <laughs> yeah. His mother had already passed away, right? I don't know. Because I, I, his, I his mother was a school nurse. Yeah. And she used to tell us that you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said that every week during the week, when she would prepare the vegetables, she would always save the water. And on Friday, we had soup. She said, you're pouring out the vitamins. Vitamins. The oh, that's interesting. That's good. Way back she then, used to yeah. tell us she that. knew that. She, oh. she, she was a very good nurse. Yeah. Well, what are your earliest memories of the library here? It originally started out in 1938, but it started out as the Blue Point Library. Yeah. And then it became Bayport Blue Point when our school districts consolidated in 1952. So I don't know if you started using this library around then? Well, we had quite a library mm -hmm. in the high school. The high school had a good library, yeah. I understand. And uh, yeah. we had to read a book a month, and there was ample books there. So, I don't um, remember using this. Do you don't remember those coming early, over here now? In those early days. The early days. Yeah. You probably didn't start coming over to this library then until the 50s or 60s, maybe. Yeah. But uh, we were already out of school. Sure, sure. What yeah. about that big house that was the end of uh, Fairview Avenue? Remember that great big house that caught on fire? Not the one they used to call the White House? I think so. And it, it was, was used right as a school for right a little while. Bay. Yes, it was right on the bay, <clears throat> on the corner, the east corner of yeah. Fairview east corner, Avenue. Yeah, Fairview. And I think it was arson. There oh. wasn't there some big building down in that area where the nuns lived. The nuns the, had a house over there somewhere because... That was used, on the other side of... of on the other uh, side of Fairview. Fairview. Oh. The but they used side. to walk from Blue Point, the convent down here in Blue Point, they used to walk along Middle Road to that house and then go swimming or whatever over in Bayport. Yeah. But there was that big I don't know whose house it was, though. I don't know. Right on the... I don't think anybody lived in it. It was uh, right on the corner. As you're going down, 
Fairview Avenue and you get to the street mm -hmm. it was right on that corner there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I Very think, interesting. I think uh, the, the, the gal who uh, owned the beauty shop in Bayport and Middle Road. Was that Spotlight? Spotlight. Her, <clears throat> her mother lived somewhere oh. in that area. Because Spotlight, she was there for years. I don't know how many years, but a lot of years. Now it's closed. You mean her mother or that Spotlight? I, the family, I'd say, they owned that place for a long time. Because she, she stays overnight there. Oh, okay. But they really had lived out in the Hamptons. Oh. But it was too much of a commute. Too much of a commute. So she'd stay overnight sometimes. I remember in downtown Bayport, they used to have a good toy store. I don't know if you remember that. They sold model trains. and oh, yeah. It was only a little store. Yeah. But it was a real nice store. That was yeah, back in the 60s, that. maybe. Was that in Mrs. Stalls? Right at the bend there, right? right Immediately east of, this, of the deli. Mrs. Stoll was uh, the first... Uh, store, was, and then the was, deli was then the store. deli, and then I think then the toy the post, store. Then, no, then it was the uh, Mr. Stewart's plumbing. Oh, the plumbing. Oh, the plumbing. Yes, and then Mr. the post Stewart. Store. Yeah. Yeah. Memory. God. yeah. <laughs> Is that where it was? And Mr. Stewart. Uh -oh. That was Mr. Stewart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he wow. was our plumber. And Mr. Mr. Potter used to work for him. Yes. Jean Potter was the English tenant. And the husband. And her husband used oh. to work there. Oh. Yeah, I remember he went out sailing one day and he drowned out there. No, he went um, um, duck hunting. Oh, was it duck boat. hunting? He must have fallen overboard in the boat, oh. and it was winter, oh. and they didn't find him. And I remember at Christmas time, poor Mrs. Potter was mm. there alone in her house, and they hadn't found him. And then I think when it started to thaw, they found him. Oh. Bill Brown found him. He, he was caught on one of the oyster steaks out there. Mm. But he must have had his boots on or something, like filled up with water. Mm, I, don't I don't know. know. I don't he, know. He must have had a heart attack or something. Because I know Bill used to go out and look for him yeah. with his clam tongs. With the tongs. And he found him? Oh. Yeah. Uh. He was a nice man, <clears throat> Mr. Potter. He was such a nice man. He always had a smile. All right, is that anything else you'd like to conclude with? Or? I don't know. <clears throat> we covered a lot. It said here, what did residents of Bayport and Blue Point do for a living? Yeah. In those days, we had milk oh. delivery. Yeah. We had baker's delivery. We had uh, Krug's. We used to deliver Krug's bread and cakes and Dugan's. Do you remember you used to put a cardboard sign in your window? For the laundry? For, for any, whatever the delivery was. I know if, if it had a K, that was Kruger's. And they had the insurance man came to the, your daughter. I mean, you have an envelope with hanging on the door, and he would take the oh. money and check the book. You had oh, all those I don't, I don't services. remember that. Oh. All those services we had. Yeah. There. And we had the independent garbage man that came. Yeah, there was right. no town pickup. It was no. independent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you had to pay for that yourself. Yeah. We had no yeah. doctor in Bayport. I used to have to go oh. to Sayville to the oh. little group, Dr. McDonald, Winston, oh, yeah. and... No doctor in Bayport. Wow. No. But there was a, it was a nice group. Yeah. The, the three. Dr. McDonald, his son became a doctor, too. Oh. Wasn't but, he the school doctor, too? McDonald? Wasn't he could have been. I don't know. But we used to go to his office in Sayville. Yeah. And uh, it's just walk in, and it was $2. Yeah. Paid cash. Never got and, a receipt. Uh, $2. And you did, didn't have to wait long. No. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Dr. Klein, uh my father built his house, as a matter of fact, down at the end of Ocean Avenue. And uh, he had his office in Patchogue. Oh. But he would stop by the house. If you called him up, he said, all right, I'll stop on my way home. And he would stop at the house. And, uh, and they carried a little bag. Yeah. And everything was in that bag. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the needle. The needle. I remember that. <laughs> but I think for a, I know our doctor here, Dr. Breyer, it was two dollars to visit the office, and it was three dollars if, if he came to your home. 
So oh. I know when we got sick, we were always taken to the doctors. We did not have a home visit. <laughs> it was a dollar extra if you got a needle. It was a, oh, a dollar extra. Yeah. I never liked that. When my kids were born. I like needles. Oh, I know the third doctor. I was yeah. trying to think of it was Dr. Eller. Eller. No, I don't know that name. Because he used to sail in the wet pants, his son. Okay. Dick Eller, who oh. became a doctor, too. Oh, okay. He well, glad you thought of it. Anesthesiologist. Oh, anesthesiologist. And, uh, I see him when once in a while when we have a reunion, probably oh. of the wet pants. Oh yeah. Every twenty five years. Or so. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and when Harriet oh. died, he wrote me a note. Oh, that he, was nice. He's, yeah. he's down in Maryland now, or something. He's retired now. Yeah. All right. So shall we wrap it up? Is that sure. everyone's happy and? I think it's going to be a very valuable contribution to local history. This marks the end of the interview with Mebby Banizak and Ken Purdy.